Hello friends and welcome to a chat from the engineering desk. I hope you are all doing very well today. And for our pleasure today, our enjoyment, found this in scrap bin. This is a servo motor. It is brushless, so it's a induction motor on the outside and a permanent magnet rotor uh, DC motor brushes on the inside okay so you've got two plugs earth and then your three phases over here and then you have your resolver this does not have an encoder as uh, we were looking at other devices um, I don't know what's wrong with this. It spins freely, so it, it means we don't have loose magnets and we don't have shorted stator windings. So there could be a problem with the resolver. That's why it's here. We, I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to show you what's inside. You're going to learn about resolvers today. So, what you do is pop out four screws. This is quite an old motor, it was called the Uni Motor UNE range from Control Techniques. It has subsequently been replaced with the um, FM range of motors. And this thing is dirty. That's why we do this on this plank, on this cutting board. So we can clean it afterwards. No harm, no foul. See, I think we had one more here. Yep. Yeah, it looks greasy over there. Oh my, a lot greasy. This probably came out of some kind of a machine. Well, it's, uh, it's grimy. But that's okay. Because I'm the one getting dirty, not you guys. Um, let's see. That's, that's what it looks like over here. Um, this over here spins. So that is your rotor and the stationary bit around it is the stator. So the rotor has windings in it and the stator has windings in it. So you got a whole bunch of pins up here, you got three sets of windings you got the excitation which is what magnetizes this thing then you got two feedback windings your sine and your cosine so those are 90 degrees out of phase and this produces therefore an absolute feedback value on of the angle of your rotor so your your servo amplifier knows how to commutate this over here is the motor thermistor sensor. And those are those wires. So, we got two, four, six, eight. There we go. Let me show you how to turn them out. You learn something here. You know that trusty flake. Uh, 
need these. Uh, let's check. There we are. Like I say, <laughs> our flake is a little bit old. So let's see. 36 ohms, that looks like a winding. 11 ohms, that looks like a winding. Uh, contact. 11 ohms, that looks like a winding. And 153. That is probably the um, temperature sensor. <clears throat> now, these windings normally have either 2 to 1 or the 3 to 1 turns ratio, which is why we're measuring 11 ohms and 30 ohms. So this is a 3 to 1 resolver. Now, but schmutz everywhere, but that's okay. I'll deal with that later. What I'm gonna do is because we know that this is our two secondaries, and that is our excitation. I'm going to hook up a signal generator to it and and to look at what comes out of those two windings in the oscilloscope. So, I want a moment please while I get the signal generator and scope set up. Alrighty, we are back. I've got the uh, scope set up. So you can see as I rotate it, the one channel, the voltage goes up. And then the crossover. And then the other one goes up again. Obviously while the uh, Channel A is at zero volts, so I don't have a trigger. <clears throat> so that's what that looks like. So there you can see the um, the sine and the cosine reporting the shaft position as I turn it like that okay so that's what that looks like now for some reason I'm not sure if my probes are set up correctly but channel A and channel B's voltages are different That might be why the um, servo motor ended up in the scrap pile. But we can still play with it and I can show you how resolvers work. Look at that. That's so cool. Okay. So, I've got the signal generator hooked up. So there you can see the mess with... Uh, the <laughs> all the stuff on the back of the motor by the plug and then over here uh, there's the signal generator doing its thing for us I've got it set to sine wave 
so if I set it to a uh, drag of the wave, that's what we get. And that's what a square wave looks like if you put it into one of these. Um, there you can see what's coming out of the signal generator as I turn up the frequency like so so what goes in comes out it's just that the amplitude is different from farmfoodfamily.com in conclusion the main difference between a fireplace Alexa, and a Alexa, that Alexa, Alexa stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it Okay. <laughs> i tell you what. Got to remember to unplug her before starting a video. Anyhow, I'm done with this. Let's take it apart. Uh, what I'm going to do is zoom you out a bit. Zoom, zoom, zoom out like so and take that away Ooh, shut him down and also there you've seen a little bit of the scope oh, very good and that pull all the probes off like so and try not to destroy the tips on them Some people don't care for scope probes, and I think that is a crime against all manner of things, machinery, humanity, science, and so on. Treat your scope probes with respect, kids. Treat your equipment with respect, even if it's not yours. Right, so let's carry on vandalizing this thing. Uh, what happens here is that it's got some more screws um, down there, like so. Let's see. Uh, one size up by the looks of things. Uh, the rotor is bonded on to the, uh, I think there might be an Allen key. No, not to worry. We have a tool for that problem. Um, the rotor is epoxied onto the motor shaft. So I actually need a puller to extract that and for obvious reason it's bonded on very well so what I'm going to do and to warp out these screws like so they're not very tight Who knows, we might even try connecting this to an amplifier in the future. Let's see if we can get it to flash up. That's why I've not at this stage cut the wires or actually vandalized the thing to the point where it can no longer be played with. Come on. Come on, come unscrewed now, please. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay, here. Is 
data the business end so it is held by these uh, washers these screws and washers that fit into a groove on the side with these uh, uh, fancy fasteners three of them so what you do is you remove them to not obstruct the camera view already there we go now it gets interesting because inside uh, the raining screws never mind inside hang on there's my pointy thing there we go Okay, I was, I've obviously, I've taken it off. And, de, de, de. <clears throat> yeah. That is the primary winding on the rotor. There's your secondary winding on the rotor. So your excitation winding lives inside here. Got the winding in there. And there's two steel rings that couple magnetically to these steel rings and complete the magnetic circuit to that winding and then what you have on the secondary is that winding which communicates with those over there which has got your two secondaries, your sine and your cosine, wound into there. Um, can't actually see the. Um, if you look at it, you can see. There wires go in and then it skips one and then wires go in. Hard to say. But that's your secondary. So as these poles move over those, it produces a sine and cosine signals. That's how the resolver works. <coughs> so that spins like that and this obviously is precisely located over that so you, know, you don't have any physical contact um, between the two right in your face <laughs> that's okay now this has been glued on. It's not intended to come off. If you if you pull on that, you pretty much got to destroy that to get it out. Uh, I think we they're very reliable. Mechanically, this is a a durable thing. I've had it once, where when the thing got warm. It developed a break in the winding and you'd lose your signal and uh, so what I did there is I pulled the old one off I stole one from a donor motor and I pushed it back on with some Loctite and we had a working motor again because these motors are quite valuable the expensive motors so I was able to replace this mo the, the, the rotor on the resolver. It was a Nicole Morgan motor. 
but resolvers are durable they resistant to shock and vibration and temperature even uh, environmental attack to some extent that's what the resolver looks like so um, you might play with this a bit in the future but I, th I saw this in the scrap pile and I thought that certainly is going to make for a lovely video and there you have it um, if you if you pull this off and you undo those screws over here those you you get to see what's inside here which is basically an induction motor and you've got your rotor with the permanent magnets inside the this whole front of this motor um, does everything comes out the back of this motor so um shall we try to take it apart you want me to take it apart don't you come on let's do it zoom out a little bit let's see if we can get the the stuff to move backwards because you want to see what's inside this motor and this is an educational journey so Maybe the motor doesn't go back together again afterwards. It's a motor from a scrap bowl. For us to take apart and then learn from. Not many people get to see this. Right now. There might be a circlip behind this front seal in front of the front bearing. Um, which is why this is basically moved. That that back bearing has the the housing has moved on the bearing itself, but the shaft is not moved. Um, bear with me for a moment while I find um, while I vandalize this motor just a moment already um, yes yeah, we're recording the linear impact driver pushed us out that's what the magnets look like sticky no strong magnets there's the um, 
shoved in the rear bearing housing. Um, and that is what the stator looks like. There's the earth connection. That over there is the thermistor connection. Now this, now down the end is the other bearing. Now this obviously is one casting. If we, before we wrap up this video, have a look. Um, we have a look at this. Um, we have a look at the shape of this turn. That's one of the poles. This is a six pole motor. So one can basically count six of those. So you'd have three on one side, three on the other side. Um, yeah, it's a six pole motor. So you can tell by looking at the motor how many poles it's got by looking at the shape of the turn on the end. If this were a two-pole motor, that would go 180 degrees. If it were a four-pole motor, it would go 90 degrees. In the case of um, this motor, it's 60 degrees. So it's 360 divided by 6. Yeah, it's 60 degrees seeing on the turn over there and then the other one visible over there the overlap being a three-phase motor that you can tell by taking off the end bell of a motor and look at the shape of the windings how many poles it's got on any induction motor whether it be they brush the servo on induction motor with the rotor would be the squirrel cage type flavor. So, that was a good one. Very interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me today for a nice teardown where we really go into how these work and if you don't have an encoder on the back you have a resolver which is what these this is sort of the precursor to encoders and resolvers are used in other places as well um we fired it up had a look at what comes out of it and i hope it made sense and that you guys who work with this stuff understand it a bit some of you have never seen it before now got an idea what the resolver is and so on <clears throat> and i thank you for being here so ladies and gentlemen have an awesome day further take care and i'll soon be seeing you back here for more cheers and now for some bonus content What's this? Oh, no. In my word. Those magnets are strong. Got it out. What's this? Mind your fingers. They are strong. very strong not as strong as they were originally because removing them from the magnetic circuit causes them to demagnetize partially that's why you don't do this <laughs> all right folks bye